I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. So in our last episode, Chaos Eater, we got an overwhelming amount of requests from you guys to make Thor's new weapon. And we decided to jump right into the forge, make it as fast as we can, because, well, we wouldn't have this ability to do the show without you, the fans, so this one's for you. Avengers Infinity War, still in the theaters. So throughout the episode, if we're gonna throw out a spoiler, we'll be sure to warn you. So here it is, this is a spoiler. Thor's new weapon is called Stormbreaker. It's part Warhammer, part Battle Axe. It's an awesome weapon. We see it forged actually in the movie itself, but they don't really do it right. They cast it. We don't really wanna ever cast a weapon. So we're gonna start off with some forging, do it right. There's gonna be a whole lot of overlays, cut and welded. It's gonna be like a three-dimensional puzzle. It's gonna be an awesome build, an awesome weapon by the time we're done. Let's get started. To make the main body of the ax, I'm going to start out with a piece of 1045. I'm going to square it up in the middle on the power hammer and punch a hole. After that, I'm going to forge out the axe portion, leaving the back, the hammer section, nice and round. After I'm done with my forging, John will make a set of overlays that will complete the desired look. Whenever punching a hole into hot material, you want to use some sort of anti-stick compound. Ilya just crushes up some charcoal, adds some ash and a little oil, and this will allow him to remove the punch each time he uses it. You can see Ilya first just lightly hits to create a mark so he knows where to hit. Again, goes to the heat, comes back, move back to the hammer. This is gonna take a while to punch through, but once he's halfway through, he can flip the material over, carefully mark it, and begin the process again. With the central hole now established, it's time to move on to forging the axe blade itself. He's gonna first move to the flat dies on the nasale and pull out what we'd call a bow tie shape that's just flaring out that end into an axe blade. He's then gonna use a several different dies, both a top tool and fullering dies to pull the material out top and bottom to get the desired width. Here I have Thor's new weapon. This is just the foundation. We have a lot more work to do to this, so this is just gonna be the roughing. We're gonna start hogging the material off. Gotta clean up the flat and the hammering. With the core of the axe now forged and ground, it's time to start on the overlays that create the real look of Stormbreaker. So to create the form that you see on the hammerhead side of this axe, Ilya's forged just that big round section and that's gonna protrude through and that'll be our striking surface. We have a much larger form. If we were gonna make that thing solid, we wouldn't even be able to pick it up. We'd probably have a 400 pound piece when we were done. So we're gonna build that out of 316 steel. So Kerry has welded up the pieces that he plasma cut for our hammer end. So this will go over the round stock and be the actual end of our hammer. He welded all those pieces together, making basically a 3D puzzle. It's now my job to just blend those welds off, make this look like one solid piece. Okay, I've started to weld the overlay sections onto our Thor's hammers. We went ahead and cut these heavy steel cheek plates for the side of the axe. I go on something like that and then we'll fill these sections, kind of like a big hollow box. The drawing shows a V-shaped channel on the side. 
I didn't have any half inch angle iron, but I did have some box tube. So we notched the side plate, set it in, tack welded it. After I weld on the side plates, I'll come and grind that top half off, leaving the V-shaped channel. Now that we have the first side done, we need to flip it over, we'll do the same thing on the other side. John has made a ton of progress on our hammer. So you can see he's TIG welded and blended a lot of the seams from all the panels. He also took our square tube, ground it flat, so now we have a nice V canal running along the center of the hammer. He's also gone in with the TIG and welded our seams, so we'll be able to sand that back flat. That'll be nice and flush, it'll look like one fluid piece. Now on the edge itself, he's done a lot of fill weld. I'll have to hollow grind that, blend it all in as one. And we've started making our axe points for both the top and the bottom of the axe. Now this piece, which we've already ground a shape, started as this piece, believe it or not. So this is two pieces of half inch welded together. We then slotted right here so it fits nice and tight. This will have to get welded here and in the back. And then our cover plate will fit over top like that, be welded solid, and then it'll really start to look like a solid axe, not a hollow one. So next thing, Let's move to the narrow wheel and I'll finish this piece off and then we'll go back to the main grinder and I'll grind this solid block and show you how we made it look like this. As John continues to build this weapon and weld sections together, Matt will be taking it into the grinding room and blending all these welds. It's getting heavier and heavier as we go, but once we have the handle on, it'll be much easier to hold. The very last thing that we have to do before adding overlays is to make sure the base of the hammer is completely polished. I'm gonna use a soft wheel, 220 grit, take my time and make it look as good as possible before we move on to adding those overlays. John now begins to check the form for the land jets. These will be the reinforced sections that run around the top of the axe and hammer area and move down onto the wood to give it a lot of strength. Working from the pictures, John's created a pattern where he can lay in these overlays on the blade. But once you have them in metal, they move differently than just if you have a drawing or paper. So he's gonna take some time to figure out how to make these fit before he welds them on. So as I promised you all at the top of the episode, if there was gonna be a spoiler, I would give you a fair warning. So here it is, spoiler. The handle for Thor's new weapon is made out of Groot's arm. Anybody who's seen the movie knows it's a pretty epic scene. So somewhere in this pile lays our axe handle. Okay, okay, spoiler alert. Of course I didn't make our handle out of a tree branch that's been sitting out in the rain rotting for a couple months. What I did was I took a four x four of nice hardwood took it to the sander and carved my shape. Afterwards, I went to the narrow wheel and carved in a natural tree branch kind of texture. This is definitely the way to go with something this heavy. Our hammerhead probably weighs 40 or 50 pounds. Only a couple weeks ago, you guys requested this build and we did our best to make it as fast as we possibly can. John put a lot of effort into this one. It was a real challenge making a box around a hand forged piece. I think he did an awesome job. And for our final spoiler, this ax is awesome.
did break the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.